I get asked this question probably an uncomfortable amount of times, and most recently by a couple of patrons, and my general answer is that I don't actually know what's in my toolkit. There's so many things in here that some of them just get lost, misplaced, uh, pushed to the bottom, pushed to the top, left on the desk at home, left on the desk here, that I've actually kind of lost track of what's in here, barring a few key items, so let's have a look. I also get asked about the tool case itself a lot, which is, you know, odd. It is a cool case though, I guess. It was available on Hobby Link Japan for a brief amount of time before they all sold out. And now I don't think you can really get them in many places. Um, just search for Gundam pen case, I think, and that will, that will get you generally where you need to go. Great case, fits a load of stuff, makes people think that I know something about Gundam and they think that I know what a uh, Charizard's kitchen counter is so i should probably preface or preface this um by explaining why i have a tool case in the first place and the reason i have it is probably very fucking obvious is that i work here and i also take work home sometimes a lot of times whether it is painting modeling whatever uh editing filming i usually end up doing stuff here there and everywhere the camera I will just take with me as and when, although I do have two. I have some dedicated grip stuff there like stands, lights, etc. Because I can't move those every day. And paints, they got multiple sets of paints everywhere. That's all stuff I physically, just, I'm not interested in moving every day. And it was just easier to get twice the amount of stuff. But the small case of essentials means that for the size of this case, I can have the same reliable tools here that I do at home or vice versa. So what's in the case and why should my tools recommendation count? Uh, well, I do make quite a lot of stuff with these tools and it's safe to say in the five or so years that I've been back into the hobby, I've definitely spunked a load of money up the wall on stuff that was just garbage. So um, hopefully I can save you from making that mistake too. And all this stuff is stuff that has survived the test of time and gets used every day. First up is knives. We need knives and probably the most important thing to get right about knives is that they're sharp, dangerous, and a knife that breaks or slips in your hand is just not to be trusted. And I have three flavors here. The gaffer is this old Citadel Exacto. I'd assume that this is early to mid 2000s, back when they made handles that actually had grip and form. Although I believe the most recent knife they've come out with echoes this older design. Remember the last six or seven years they've had this awful thin gripless metal thing, which you know, to me looked like a fucking accident waiting to happen. The Blue Spot Tools folding knife with a changeable blade, basically a mini Stanley. And I think I got this guy from Boys for a few quid. Honestly, it's fine. So when my MS is playing up, I'll often to try and get a bit more gas out of myself for the day. I'll I'll try and move to something that's got a different grip uh, just to kind of ease the fatigue on my hand really. And that's if I'm doing like long knife stuff sessions. Disposable pound land blade. Contrary to what I said about knives being really dangerous and therefore shouldn't be cheap shit that you can't grip. Um, pound land blade. I use this and I've got some bigger brothers for it here at the studio. And these are basically just burner blades. I will carve foam with them until they blunt, which doesn't take very long, or they snap off or they break. Uh, yeah, basically, whenever I need that kind of length to cut through something, we'll go with those. What's up, guys? Tony D here, keeping cool on school and fools. Heh, <laughs> all this talk of tools, and D-Dog hasn't even mentioned the best tool the mankind ever invented. Well, <laughs> the wheel? <laughs> Think again, Grandpa. It's Squarespace. It's Squarespace. Squarespace has all the tools you need to make your website a fresh and funky new place to hang out with a huge number of ready to use templates all working with an easy to use flexible grid system. I'm not kidding guys. Squarespace's trick bag is full to the brim and they're sharing their trick bag with you for 10% off subscriptions and domains using the code MSPaints at checkout at squarespace.com forward slash MSPaints. Now I know what you're thinking. Tony, why you gotta do the invention of the wheel like that? The invention of the wheel meant that we could transport goods and services long distances with ease for the first time in human history. Well, so can Squarespace. 
With inbuilt tools to allow you to set up your online store and list items in minutes, Squarespace is the new way to move your goods and services to customers. And if you got a brick and mortar store, no problem. Simply link your existing EPOS system up to the website storefront and you're good to go. Go! And it wouldn't be a Tony D sponsor segment without mentioning the domain acquisition tag. That's right guys, head on over to this little guy over here, slap a dad in there, and what do you want to call yourself? A little corner of the internet with your name on it. Easy peasy guys. And all of these features built into the browser based interface. I can call my website anything I want and it's easy for people to find. So head on over to squarespace.com forward slash MS Paints and use the code MS Paints at checkout to save yourself 10% of your first website subscription or domain. Hey, <laughs> hey, see what you can make today. Yay. The best to you. Tweezers, apparently. I really like tweezers. No idea. I use them now and again. Infuriating little tools. Maybe it's just my motor skill issues, but I find these cause more tears than they fix. Clippers. These clippers are very standard clippers. In fact, I would go as far to say as they are substandard clippers. Again, three or four quid a piece from boys, I believe. I'll just go through these until they blunt or they fall apart or they're too gross to be on camera. Get the job done. I think while I'm in Japan, I am going to invest in some god hand clippers. Uh, certainly not for everyone. I think they're like 40 quid a piece, but they are, I'm told, the best like miniature modeling clippers on the planet and for 40 quid they fucking better be and on the subject of blades uh the anti slash thumb guard which means you don't have to go to the toilet as much i got given one of these while i was working with war cradle studios recently it might seem very much like a master has given dobby a sock vibe but the resin sculpt team had them on and i wondered what the fuck those were and they just were happily carving away with exactos and they gave me one of these and said these are all your problems gone away i tried it myself and all good i do a lot of cutting towards myself and my thumb as a result generally gets pretty fucked up um and there's been times where i have had to stop filming after a little incident and uh go away and come back the next day to resume filming because there would literally be blood everywhere in fact there was blood everywhere um there's a there's a chunk of the the dropship build video missing um because there was just blood all over everything <laughs> i was going to talk about brushes last but i know there's some brush only people probably watching this and i don't want them to be bored to death by me just picking through poundland crap uh, so yeah here's some expensive brushes i'm using artist opus i hear that these are uh, rebranded or very similar to a windsor and newton set of dry brushes specifically. I haven't tried those, so I don't know if they're the same or not, but I am told very similar. These are really solid, really rugged, and expensive enough that I actually take care of them. I should probably apply brush care to all my brushes, but these ones get looked after the best. Provided I give these a little soak in hand sanitizer and rinse them properly after a paint session, they never really seem to want to fail me. And this mixed with the poorly named dry box that I came up with and invented patent pending. Uh, my dry brushing is pretty decent now. Files, two cheapo, like small grit, I guess low grade grit. Hard files. Uh, one's, a circ one's a cylinder, one is a not cylinder. These cut through things real fucking easy. These are for the big jobs. Oh, again, three quid for a pack of a dozen. These two are the only two that I need, so I keep those with me. Uh, two slightly older GW files. I think these might have been spenny to the tune of 18 quid for two, uh, which is pretty ridiculous. However, of all the rebranded marked up tat that they have, these are definitely the best thing that they have done or still do. There's really just, I think one of them, I think it might be this one is the superior one. Um, the, the level of effort to smooth finish is just right i'm never going to go too far with it i don't think uh, the, the finish is just always perfect with that one so yeah i accidentally left this in my bag at an airport once which was fucking infuriating uh because you yeah, obviously you can't take something like this on a plane because they think it's a shiv so i paid 15 pounds 
to have them kept in a fucking plastic bag while I was in Bulgaria. The £15 is actually cheaper than buying a new set, so I did that. They do need better grip, so this, this shit, mm-mm, mm-mm-mm. A uh, pencil, enough said, one of 400 I have. Two sculpting tools, uh, I don't really do much sculpting, but when I do any green stuff or milliput stuff, these guys, uh, indispensable, again, like a set of 20 for five quid, they do the job, and my god, the grips on these, it's all, all metal construction, but like, the grip is insane to the point where it actually makes me anxious touching it. Which might not be a good thing, I don't know. Latest addition is the wire wrap tool. I added this to the kit after doing the dropship conversion. I didn't have to solder anything in that project despite it having lights absolutely everywhere. Just strip the wire, put the wire and the pin in the end and twist your way to a very, very firm, supposedly temp fit, providing they don't move the board or the wires inside. It's not going anywhere. Nice. Wire wrap tool. Amazing. Mmm. Burner brushes. Okay. They've been mingled in with my not burner brushes. You a burner brush? Yeah, you count. Fucking state of that. Whose idea was it to make white handled brushes? Yeah. Burner brushes. Uh, everything from... Um, Citadel ones that have been gunked up and I don't like to Poundland brushes brushes that I'm not going to miss if they die <laughs> so there's some synthetic ones for oils um, some other synthetic ones for you know stuff like the Vallejo liquid metal colours like the gold and the coppers I use because no matter what I do and I'm sure everyone's going to give me the same advice I've been given before but I cannot get those pure and clean as they once were so we do a, a, a 25p burner brush every time we paint with those and yeah sometimes you just need a couple of oh that one's actually all right i'll put that in the good pile and sometimes you need just a dirty fucking knackered brush to shunt some shit around on a base or to paint some terrain or that is garbage construction gunda marker um, I'm assuming this is Joe's. He gave me it to try, and I probably just haven't given it back yet. Joe, you can have this back at any point you want. <laughs> it's essentially a, a black panel liner uh, for your Gundams, um, your foreign muck, bloody Gundams. But generally, the, the way that I use it, especially with Gundam, is to just push it down into an area, and then the ink just kind of, or whatever it is, just kind of flows into the panels and just kind of does it from the origin point. The only issue is does leave a bit of a mess so you have to wipe clean the area where you actually held the pen i've seen tutorials where people are just drawing down the panel with them but you can see if you can see that is a fucking thick line to expect someone to get down a panel between a panel it's just not going to happen so curveball mold line remover it was a wonderful gift from one of my beloved patrons thank you Observe, and this is why I keep it in my case. Okay, so actual regular brushes time. The sword do not make it the samurai, and the paintbrush do not make it the painter. So says the way of Bushido. However, shit tools are shit tools, and I don't see any point in fighting against the shit tool. So my weapon of choice for brushes is the Raphael 8404. Often referred to by some as the best brushes in the world, but absolutely everyone says that about their brush of choice. Like, even if they're painted with a Poundland brush, that's the best brush in the world, you don't need expensive brushes. So I'm not going to say that that is the best brush in the world. However, it is probably the nicest and my favourite brush that I've ever used, or the series of brush I've ever used. Uh, you know, it's been two years and most of these, I think this one might be three years old, still has a good body, still has a nice point, still lots of bounce in it, and just refuses to fucking die. I don't even clean them properly, I treat them like shit, and they just refuse to die. I haven't bought any in a while, and I saw that the price had got up, which is, no oh shit, direct correlation, why I didn't buy any more, and so I just deep cleaned most of those to get some more life out of them. But yeah, those are my, my go-to everyday worker brushes, I don't really have anything bad to say about them, and my painting did get better, 
after I got them. That doesn't mean that I became a great painter. It just means that I enjoyed the processes more. Uh, what I wanted to do with the models actually happened. Um, and I didn't feel like my tools were fighting me. Like with a few exceptions, better kit generally means a better end product. So that was my hobby kit. Um, lovely stuff. You can fit a hell of a lot in this pen case, which is probably why I love it so much. <laughs> Of course, if you've come across any gear that you think might be helpful to other people or stuff that's a little bit niche and we might not have heard of, please let me know in the comments if you've come across anything really decent that you think I should give a try. Ideally not something that costs much money. So yes, do please leave me a comment. I do read every comment. I don't reply to them all, but I do read every comment that I can. Thank you for watching and thank you to my wonderful Patreon community for selecting this as a topic. What's in Dave's hobby case? We have a section on the Discord specifically, which is reserved for just talking about different kinds of tools. So that's generally a nice little space and where I like to pick up some ideas as well of things that I definitely can't afford to buy. But yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much. And cheers, I'm out of here.